okay, how do I, how do I say this? Um, it, it's not you, it's me. Oh, no, you know what? I just gotta say it. You're smothering. I mean, you're not smothering me personally, but sometimes there's a rock outcrop and you and all your plant friends are smothering it. I can't even see it. Like, I just wanna see the rock outcrop. Stop smothering it. And I totally understand the symbiotic relationship we have. Like, I get it, I appreciate it, I need you to survive. But sometimes a good rock outcrop to be able to see it, I feel like I need that to survive. I wanna be able to hit it with my rock hammer. I wanna be able to touch it. Sometimes I wanna be able to lick it. To make sure it's not halite, you sicko. You know, like table salt, sodium chloride. Never mind. You don't understand. I'm sorry, what's that? You're telling me that certain plants can help us identify geologic structures out in the field? <laughs> what plant can tell me that? Oh, he's standing right behind me? Well, let me turn around slowly so I don't actually step on him. <laughs> oh my God! Be gentle. Oh. Greetings from Thousand Palms in the Coachella Valley of Southern California. That big mountain you see behind me is San Jacinto. And as you can see, it's doing a great job in robbing all the weather that comes off the Pacific Ocean, creating a rain shadow effect on this side, which is why we have a desert here and not many plants or plants that are well designed to handle not that much water. Now, recently I just learned from my plant friend here that there are certain plants out here that can help us identify geologic structures. Before we get ahead of ourselves, I'd like to introduce you to the California Fan Palm. Also known as Washingtonia fallifera, these palms can live up to 250 years old and grow up to 60 to 80 feet in ideal conditions. And as you can see, they're quite resistant to the seasonal fire. Now what's interesting about these palms is they need a constant source of water to survive. But we're in the middle of a desert. Where are these palms getting all their water from? Let's go in a little deeper and take a look. Just passing through palms. I said I was sorry, please don't hit me again. Ooh, I think I found the source of their water. So here we can clearly see fresh water percolating or bubbling up onto the surface. It's a natural spring. And all around, we see this white substance at the surface. As the water comes to the surface and evaporates, the minerals within it are left at the surface. So we have water thirsty palms, a natural spring, but how does that point to a geologic structure? We need to look at one more clue. And for that, we need to go up. Here's some nice drone footage of that same grove of California fan palms. Do you see a growth pattern within the palms? Do you see how they're growing along a distinct line? Well, geologically speaking, can you think of any geologic structures that could be linear? Did you get it? Okay, let me give you a hint. Let's play word association. Uh, it's not my, thanks for putting up with me and all my earthquake. Okay, it's fault. It's earthquake fault. It's an earthquake fault. Yes, an earthquake fault. In particular, the San Andreas fault. This particular fault right here is called the Banning Strand. Now the Banning Strand is a strike-slip fault, which means that the majority of the movement of the fault here is lateral. These rocks are sliding past each other. And what can happen when they've been sliding past each other for millions of years, that section right in the middle where they're touching, 
the rock in there just gets pulverized to the consistency of almost flour. You can see it here. And this stuff right here is called fault gouge. So you might be wondering, what do the palms and the natural spring we saw have to do with any of this? Well, as the groundwater is moving its way from the mountains down into the valley here, it confronts the fault. Not just the fault, but that fault gouge within it. And the water cannot penetrate through. So the water will hit the fault gouge, which serves like a dam. It'll kind of run left and right, but eventually the pressure is so much that the water will ooze up to the surface and become a natural spring. And since it's doing this along a linear fault, the spring is also linear, and that's why we see the plant growth growing in a linear fashion. So how cool is that? Palms and other water-thirsty plants out here in the desert can help us identify where earthquake faults are. So the next time you're headed to the Coachella Music Festival and you're driving on the 10 freeway, be sure to look north. You may see a line of palms dotting the landscape and you can bore all your friends by saying, there's an earthquake fault right there. So I wanna thank you for joining me as we found out today that not all plants are bad. In fact, some of them can actually help us identify geologic structures out in the field. I think I owe you an apology from some of the harsh words I said earlier. So sorry about that. Um, so this is uh, your view you get to check out every day, huh? It's pretty nice, it's pretty nice. Oh yes, yeah, sparkling water, grapefruit. You wanna try some? Right, it's not bad. Uh, it says naturally essenced. You know what that means? Yeah, me neither. <laughs>